So when you bought or received your Sony A6000, 6300, 6500, it may have come with one of these, which is a 16 to 50 mil Sony kit lens. Today I'm going to do a comparison between this kit lens and the Sigma 16 mil f1.4. So first up, why would I even do a comparison between these two lenses? They are very different lenses. This is a prime lens being a lens that doesn't zoom and this is a 16 to 50 mil zoom or power zoom lens. It's called a power zoom because it has a button on the side which you can control the zoom with versus your regular kind of twist. The main reason I wanted to compare these two is because at their widest point they are both 16 millimeter lenses. Now I wanted to show you how different a 16 millimeter lens can be between a zoom lens and a prime lens. There are some main obvious differences and then there are some less obvious differences if you're kind of still learning camera stuff. So 16 millimeter is fairly wide. It's not considered a super wide lens, but it is considered a wide lens. You could use it for landscape photography, you could use it for astrophotography, uh, vlogging, anything like that really. So both lenses would be suitable for that, but one of them is gonna be better than the other in doing certain things. The Sigma is a prime lens, meaning it doesn't have any form of a zoom. It's a fixed focal length, being only 16 millimeter. The Sony is a 16 to 50 millimeter power zoom, meaning that it has a zoom switch on the side, which controls zooming in and zooming out without having to physically turn the lens where you would normally with uh, a zoom lens like this one. So this zooms by turning it here. The zoom is built in, but you would turn this and that would zoom in and out. With a power zoom, the button or the switch on the side, you push it one way and it zooms in. You pull it back the other way and it zooms back out again. So that is what we call a power zoom. So you may have just got this 16 to 50 mil kit lens and you might be thinking about upgrading, but why would you consider something like this when realistically they're both 16 mil, surely they do the same thing, right? Well, yes and no. So the main difference obviously being size. They are very, very different in length, width, weight. Pretty much everything about their build is very different. Here is a little clip now showing you the main differences in size and everything like that. This is obviously a zoom lens at its widest being 16 mil and going all the way up to 50 mil. So it does give you a nice range of zoom there, a little bit more flexibility. You don't have to move around yourself. You can just stay in the same position and zoom in. Versus with this, if you wanna get closer, you kinda have to get closer. The only advantage in my opinion with this lens versus the Sigma is the fact that this has some form of a zoom on it. Here is the Sony at 16 mil and now zoomed into 50. So. Quite a difference in zoom there. So image quality in these lenses. A prime lens, a lens with a fixed focal length, will nearly always result in a better image quality, a much sharper image, a much nicer image, clearer image than something like this that has a zoom in it. So low light abilities. This lens has a variable aperture, meaning the more you zoom in, the aperture is gonna get a little bit higher. It goes all the way from a 3.5 to a 5.6 aperture. 3.5 being the lowest or the widest that it will go. This goes down to a 1.4. That is a much, much wider aperture, and in low light, it's gonna be significantly better. So low light and aperture and f-stop and all that kind of thing, that leads me to the next point, which is bokeh. Quick lesson on bokeh if you're not familiar. So in the simplest form, bokeh is the difference between the foreground focus and the background focus. So you might be able to see it here, but if I get out of the way, my background there is a little bit out of focus, but I'm actually in focus. That is essentially bokeh. So why do you want bokeh? Well, it helps separate the foreground from the background. It makes the foreground or the bit in focus kind of pop, gives you a little bit of separation versus the background. With a 1.4, you are gonna get an insane amount of bokeh. It's gonna be so blurry in the background and look really, really nice. With this, it's gonna be okay at 3.4. I meant 3.5. It's gonna be okay at 3.5, but it's not gonna be nearly as nice as this. In short, the Sigma's 1.4 is gonna have a way, way nicer bokeh than the 3.5 on the Sony 16 to 50 mil. I'll show you a comparison now of the difference of what 1.4 is gonna look like versus 3.5. So price. So this lens is a kit lens, meaning it comes in the kit with the camera most of the time. If you buy an A6000, 6300, 6500 as a kit, it will more often than not come with this lens. If you wanted to buy this lens on its own, it's actually 172.98 on Amazon right now. 
Uh, that's US pricing. And if you wanted to get the Sigma, Sigma is a lot more money. It is 449 US on Amazon. Big difference in price. You can't really compare them though, because as I said, this is a kit lens. It comes with your camera. You're more likely gonna always have this lens. This one would be one that you would consider purchasing. Build quality of these lenses, this is a much smaller lens. It doesn't feel as nice in the hand and so you can hear that there. It does make a little bit of noise when you shake it. That's probably due to the zoom, also potentially the steady shot built into the lens as well. There's nothing in there. It's all solid inside. It's also much heavier. This does feel like a much better built lens. Uh, everything's smoother on it. The manual focus ring is very nice. This has a manual focus ring. It's very small. It does go smoothly, but it's very small as well. The manual focus on this is a bit tricky to use. When you first get it, it's very, very sensitive, I guess is the best word for it. You can go from being in focus to out of focus very quickly. Whereas on the Sigma, it's a very nice focus ring. The focus is a lot easier to use on this. Which brings me on to the next point, which is steady shot. This lens has it, this lens does not. What is steady shot? Well, steady shot is basically when you're using the lens and it's on the camera, inside here, it has a, a way to kind of counteract a little bit of your shakiness if you're going handheld, a little bit of movement, it will smooth that out a little bit. This lens doesn't have that at all. So you will see a difference if you're shooting handheld with pictures, maybe if you're vlogging. Uh, this is gonna be a smoother lens to use for your photos. They might be a little bit clearer if you're really shaking, if you're outside, you're cold or something. Whereas this, it's not gonna give you that steadier shot. Now, if you have the Sony a6500, it has built-in camera stabilization anyway. So whatever lens you put on there really is gonna get smoothed out anyway. A6000, A6300, they don't have that feature. Here's an example of me vlogging with this. Uh, so you can see the difference versus me vlogging with this. Both will be at 16 mil. So first up, this is the Sigma 16 mil f1.4. And uh, well, see if you can see anything that's kind of shaky really. And now on to the Sony 16mm with the OSS built into it. As you can see, not a lot of huge difference, but it, it does help a little bit. So there we go, a quick comparison between these two lenses. In my opinion, the bokeh, the low light abilities, the overall image quality being far superior on this is enough of a reason to just go for this. Uh, I really don't have a purpose for this lens anymore. I hope that gave you an idea of kind of a few reasons why this lens, but then it really does depend on what your needs are anyway. Thanks for watching today. If you like this video, give me a like down below there uh, and subscribe if you're not already a part of my channel. Help me grow this channel. Help me kind of help you guys to learn about camera stuff. So that's it and I will see you guys in my next video.